Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis 4 with me, Alpha Pi Omega, Mayo and Texas 3.0 and Novgorod. So the date is 26th of July 1630. I let the game run for a bit because I want to try a couple of things and it would be stupid talking about them without actually doing them. However, now we got a technology that we can take, the diplomatic technology level 31, the Mercator Projection. The Mercator Projection advances in mathematics and navigation enabled Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercator to make a map using rumb lines, lines which represent constant course. Although this distorted the shape of the earth, it made navigating a ship much easier. First invented in 1569. Wow. Mercator maps were adopted over the following decades. Global ship trade power plus 2%. Oh, okay. That's decent. And the next technology is going to give us naval morale and global naval engagement with. Uh, we're soon going to enter the, the Baroque period and we are waiting for the flintlock muskets to upgrade our military. However, in the meantime, I have been watching the autonomy of our provinces and I have to say that I like uh, what I see. Nizhny Novgorod is starting to go green. Um, Saraya al Jadid is starting to get bright yellow, and we're gaining more and more control over certain provinces. However, Karache, Karachev is still being awful. I think that might be because there's no river running directly to it, and I'm not gonna improve the pathing. There might be a bug in the game as well, because the runner origin for Borovsk is 295 and for Karachev it's 1289. So that almost looks like there's no direct access from Vyazma uh, to Karachev or from Borovsk to Karachev. So I'll have to deal with this once I uh, conquer Razan and the surrounding provinces and I'll try to somehow integrate Karachev into our territory. I'm also saving up for a test that I want to do because we have Zavoloshe with a decent autonomy of 67.8 and I want to build, uh, it has a harborage of 4 and I want to build a harborage of level 2 in the province of uh, Pechora. I want to see how well uh, the ships will traverse the sea like this. The current runner distance is, I believe, also yeah, 3,401. So we're going to see how this is going to go. So I have selected the province and I believe right now we have enough to build it. So let's construct the building. Yes, 730 to build Harbridge level 2 in here. So we'll see what that's going to do. Uh, it's a first test. Uh, of course, I sh could go with Pinega, but I want to see the connection over the sea, and with Pinega it could be a bit different. So, we'll see how that goes. There is, or there could be a path here to Obdora, but I think that this wasteland cannot be traversed. So that means the best we can do here is go to uh, Pechora itself, then Yugra, and then hope that we can connect it via road I don't know, maybe to Leapin and then Koda, but and then to Samara. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. If we manage to get Pechora um, to at least 80, it will be reasonable to uh, go more eastwards. But apart from that, this, this is no man's land <laughs> for us right now. It might also be a good idea to build some harbridges here and there, but we'll see. Also, I have decided that we are going to... Uh, change our policies a bit. Uh, we still have the centralized state, which is good, but I don't like the mediate internal disputes, which increases our autonomy. Instead, I would like to take the enforce the religious law, which is going to slightly increase our national unrest, but give our missionaries a huge boost. So let's switch that and instead take the enforce the religious rule. And here we are going to take the Vassal Integration Act, which gives us extra diplo relation. Aggressive policing is okay, but lowers the national um, national manpower modifier, but I, I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with that. So this should greatly boost uh, the capacity of our missionaries 
yeah they're both over five percent now and it's gonna make uh converting most of our territories much easier it's probably also going to piss off some provinces and the ones that are pissed will be even more pissed but you know that's <laughs> that <laughs> you can't please everyone <laughs> Oh, and the ship in the Black Sea is finished. So I'm actually going to take them here and connect them. Now we could upgrade some of our ships, which I believe could be a good idea. So I'm gonna do that very soon. Now as far as trade go, we control Rufinia again. And in Black Sea, we're doing better. We are doing better. 10% is decent, I think, for the fact that we owe one province. Just one? Yeah, we owe one province and we have 10%, so I guess that's decent. If we uh, get more south, it's gonna be better. Now, I'm still preparing for the war against Ryazan. Uh, I am waiting for the rebels. Oh, Kipchak separatists, really? I didn't see you guys, you sneaky. Yike, bulky. Okay, I need to harsh treat you. I can't have you raising up against me right now. And there's gonna be how much of you? 8,000. Yeah, I'm definitely not ready for you right now. I should have paid a bit more attention to that, but. What can you do? What can you do? Well, I guess that's all for now. So we're going to see how well we deal with uh, the expansion east uh, to control the province of Pechora. And if that works, I, I'm going to build a harbor travel to in Pinega as well to have them both uh, connect. Now, this province is not that much populated, but Quite interesting that this one is. There's 19,000 people there. And I believe the population might be increasing. Yeah, it's increasing slightly. In Pinega, it's also increasing slightly, but not by much. Mm, and I need these guys to revolt finally. God damn it. Ah, this is just taking forever. Well, we just suppressed the rebels in uh, Siberia, but at the very same time, the rebels in uh, what I called Kipchak revolted. So I'm sending my troops there, but they will never make it in time. They just jumped like by ten percent in a couple of uh, couple of months, and yeah. But I think that the separatism actually is so high that they won't be able to increase it. Or at least that's my hope. That's my little hopey, and I'm, I'm hopeful. <laughs> uh, they do have a leader, so I could maybe send you, but I don't think that would work. Well, let's no, let's keep you where you are. Let's keep you where you are. You are going to get uh, slightly better results. I'm gonna increase the manpower investment. Anyway, a uh, couple of interesting things I'd like to mention. Uh, I think the game just recalculated the autonomy because we are starting to drop it across the board everywhere significantly. Okay, so they did manage to increase it. Uh, but just by two years, uh, not a biggie. Uh, so that's interesting, and seeing how it affects Pricey Vyatka is actually kind of interesting because uh, they drop two by a decent amount as well. So I'm interested in seeing how far they're going to drop. Places like Bashkiria are now at 92, so I think they use the runners from Nizhny Novgorod and places like that. Uh, which brings me to my point, I'm thinking of upgrading roads in Zavoloshe because that's uh, one of our most important provinces and still have only pathing of 1, which puts it autonomy at 66, uh, while Belozaro next to it has 20. So if we could just up it up a rank, uh, I think it could drop to somewhere like 40, which would then of course in effect uh, help the other provinces that we have here. But it's just an idea. 
So you guys are, yeah, you guys are under control of the rebels. Uh, anyway, our missionaries are still uh, doing their work in Sarkel and in Bashkiria. I think Bashkiria will be converted next time. Maybe one more time. No, Bashkiria will be done next time. And Sarkel... Sarkel might take two more times. Actually, Bashkiria might even convert... No, it won't convert naturally now, but if we let it a decade or two, it might just tip over. But this way, we're pretty much going to eradicate uh, Muslims from the province completely. So, that's sort of good. Sort of good. Uh, and, you know, while we're at it, let's check how expensive it's going to be to get uh, you... California, did you not hear me last time? Oh, I remember you sunk my ships at the sea. So wait, where is this? Oh, bureaucratic and error taxation. And tax farming to tax officials. It looks like it's not going to make anyone angry. That's interesting. Uh, but first let's check Check Zavoshia and its uh, roads. Uh, so construct the building. Hard bridge by two. Design project improves structure pathing. Rank two. Holy hell! <sighs> two thousand three hundred four two. That's that's insane. Am I doing? Do I have? more selected. Please tell me I do. Because that would be... That would be great at this point. And sorry, I alt-tapped out of the game. <laughs> so now I have one selected construct building. Yeah. I'm doing it correctly. So is there any other way how... we could fix this? Pretty much only by building a different port and that's not going to happen and that is just not going to happen well actually if we improved nah that doesn't make sense never mind what the hell they took over Mahambad as well uh, damn rebels. You guys just go. Well, at least when we destroy the rebels, we're gonna get that uh, 20 bonus here. And the unrest isn't that high in these provinces it would actually it could actually be suppressed by a couple of local fortifications so that might be a better uh, better investment for me than building <laughs> yeah I'm not I'm not going to do that improve infrastructure there's rank 2. 965, that's actually doable. That's not that bad. 965, we could have that in a couple of months, or I could take a loan and just secure the place. By the way, still no Crimean separatist. Oh, Astrakhani. Where are you going to raise? Sarai al -Makus. Okay, I'm gonna raise the fort here and preemptive preemptively send you there right now. Okay, Muhammad has zero. Yeah, we still need to get rid of the uh, of the 
control over the provinces to get the minus 20 bonus. Well, then we already got 640. Okay, minus 9.2. Uh, why you know recent uprising? Oh, okay, that is with the recent uprising. Cool. Thanks for letting me know, game. The Baroque period. Oh, well, too many things. Too many things. Uh, the Baroque period. A new school of art which used detail to produce grandeur and exuberance. It helped to repopularize ecclesiastical art in Europe after the Reformation. Stability cost interval lowered and Bashkiria is now orthodox. Hip hip hooray. So wait, don't we want to continue here? Yeah, we do. And there's no unrest here, right? There is no unrest. No, there is no unrest there. Cool. So these are like the only provinces that we really have to worry about. But once we get the military, I'm just going to assume we will keep harsh treating them as long as possible. Hey, okay. First, Californian colonies are self-sustaining. Novgorodian California. Uh, nope. We're going to call this New Siberia. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, yeah, we do have the colonists working, but I think we're, yeah, we're funding for just two provinces. Wait, that's a missionary. Here are the colonists. So recall you from Chinook, recall you from here, and we're going to continue northward. So I'm going to go over here, and you're going to go southward. So we'll have four provinces, and I expect New Siberia to start colonizing inland. Machina's colony colonialism happened to us. Go times minus fifty. Well that's great. <laughs> great news. Well, Sarko has been uh, peacefully converted to the true faith, and we can continue wherever we want. Uh, actually, however, I think I'm gonna go with the southern provinces, because that's where we still get a bit of unrest and getting rid of it now will make it easier for us in the long run to control them. So I'm gonna start with, uh, with yeah, it should be this province, yep, okay. So uh, Hasitar Khan, we're gonna convert, it's gonna take a while and it's going to make the locals a bit mad but once we manage to convert it, it's going to drop below zero, which is our ultimate goal. It could also happen in just one conversion cycle, so it would be kinda cool. Uh, we're also converting uh, the Uusima, yes, Uusima, and I'm gonna finish converting the rest of Finland, actually Romsa. Yeah, let's uh, let's do let's do the rest of Finland, then the Roms, and then Vesterbotten, and then we're gonna start with Estonia, uh, because I think that right now they don't have yeah uh, a missionary would make them too mad, and I don't want to risk that. So we need an advisor, and we have one right here. Good. I've been neglecting. Uh, neglecting and making the nobles happier in favor of investing into my provinces, but it has to be done right now. Yeah, we could hold a grand celebration for quite some time now, but it's very expensive. Um, 
Instead, I invested in Yaik, Boki, and Mohamed to build the level 2 garrison there, which is going to lower the unrest here by 4. That's going to make a major difference. Uh, I also noticed that we can build four more ships. So I started building two ships in uh, Silversky Donets, and I started building one ship in Vipuri and one in Izhora for the Baltic fleet. Two for the Black Sea fleet and two for the Baltic fleet. And I also want to pour more money into Samara. I want to make it better. Actually, what the hell happened here? Didn't you have irrigation? Well, I think the population is actually decreasing, so that might have something to do with it. Hmm. Well, I might just pour more money into it. I'd like to build it up. I was thinking about building amenities, uh, local one level of local garrison, two levels of irrigation, a bit of pathing. But you know what I think it is? They can't maintain the irrigation. That's the problem. There's not enough... There's just not enough people here. Okay, so I guess there might not be any reason to invest in the province because it's just going to go downhill from here. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, never mind then. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, this is where I think I'm going to end the episode. Uh, we are converting, we are preparing for the war, we are drilling our armies, and we are very close to getting the Flintlock muskets. Plus our colonies here are expanding. Good! New Siberia started colonizing as well, so we are colonizing Pomo for them, and Kalalam, let's just let them go there. And once we get it, yes. Maybe we could afford one more. That would be how much? Five. Well, I'd like to grab, but it's very unlikely someone else will grab that one, so I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Not great, but fine. How far are we with the other colonies? Oh, we have a free... Hey, okay, we can do it. So let's recall you... And... Send you here. I actually can do another one. So do we want to do... One? I'm not sure if it's the same... Uh, same colonial region. That is a question. So let's check that before we continue, or before the, we end the episode is more like it, but colonial, wait, it's a different one, province trauma, local autonomy, uh, there's one, I forgot what it's called, victory cards, colonial and trade regions, okay, so this Colonial California, and this is okay. So, if I see correctly, all the way to down here it is California, so we could just go here and fear nothing. So, wait, uh, that's you, right? Yeah, okay, let's send you here then. Oh, this province is too far away, really? Haha! <laughs> uh, okay, I guess this one isn't then. <laughs> and how are the... Oh dear God! I didn't know you guys were there. Damn it. Uh, well. 
there's another screw up on my part. I found that I had a fort in Hasatarhan, but I guess no biggie, they can't increase the uh, separatism there. So not just the Crimean separatists and will be done. Wait, what's going on? Finish them off. Yeah, and just destroy them. Kind of interesting that we destroyed their cannons before killing the front rows. It's not very usual. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in the next episode with more Let's Play European Vassalis 4 and me, Alpha Pi Omega.